Hello. Today's episode discusses the physical components that make up a slot machine. The service light, bonus display, pay table, reels, players club interface, results area, the play console with buttons, and a ticket in, ticket out interface are the slot machine components that, all together, answer how do slot machines work, plus Delaware slot machine casino gambling. In this episode, I'll also be providing three pro tips for slots players, as well as a five-star Apple podcast review from Margie Pep. If you give the Professor Slot Show a rating and review, I promise to read them and, as time permits, mention them in an upcoming episode. Thank you for joining me for the Professor Slots podcast show. I'm John Friedel, and this is the podcast about slot machine casino gambling. This is where I provide the knowledge, insights, and tools for helping you improve your slot machine gambling performance. Show notes for this episode are now available within most podcast apps or alternatively on my website at professorslots.com slash E10. John Friedel from the Professor Slots blog reveals all his slot machine casino gambling strategies as well as tips and tricks for thriving in the casino environment. Discover how to assess casinos to pick the best near you, choose winning slot machines, and identify your gambling goals, being entertained, earning comps, winning take-home cash, or combine them. John has won 90 taxable jackpots and a luxury car in nine months of slot play and made a profit at slots gambling since 2013. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash free. Again, that's professorslots.com slash free to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. Let's get started with the first segment of the show, How Do Slot Machines Work? In this episode, I again continue to answer the most common questions asked in Google website searches about slot machines. Specifically, how do slot machines work? Therefore, I will discuss seven operational components of a slot machine from the point of view of a slots player, meaning the various interface areas on the front of a slot machine, including 1. Service light, 2. Bonus display, if any, 3. Pay table, 4. Players club interface, 5. Results area, 6. Play console, and seven, ticket in and ticket out. There are additional interface areas that exist, which I didn't just list. These relatively minor slot machine components provide various secondary functions and include audio speakers, audio volume control, display lights, a lever arm, and a hearing aid jack to accommodate those slots players with a hearing disability. I should mention that based on my experience at modern casinos, the audio volume control is often a touchscreen option and often quite non-functional, even when visually shown. My assumption is that the game theme designers didn't connect it correctly with their programming tools. First up, let's discuss the service light or candle of a slot machine. A slot machine service light is generally located at the very top of a slot machine, so as to be easily visible to casino employees. Because of this light being located at its uppermost location, it's also generally known by the term candle within slots terminology. Slots players can manually switch on this service light or candle as needed by pressing the service button on the player console, or the candle will activate by itself if the slot machine develops either a service fault or a taxable jackpot is won. Service faults include lack of paper, a full cash-in condition, mechanical or electronic tampering, or an internal electronic fault such as CPU overheating or some sort of programming error. Modern casinos have various types of communication systems to help dispatchers direct their slot attendants. At a minimum, this communication system includes a headset and microphone for each slot attendant. Most recently, many modern casinos now use a dedicated smart device strapped to the arm of their slot attendants. The casino operating system automatically notifies a dispatcher whenever a service light is activated, whether by the player or automatically by the slot machine itself. The dispatcher then assigns a slot attendant to respond to the call for service. Once this notification is sent out, a lit candle is of little practical use. At best, it helps guide the responding slot attendant the last few feet to the customer needing attention and also provides some reassurance to the waiting customer that help is on the way. Slots players may manually activate the candle for a multitude of reasons 
in general, they do so to deliberately call a slot attendant to their location, for reasons, frankly, only limited by imagination. In this episode, I'll be providing three pro tips for slots enthusiasts. That being said, here's the first. Sometimes, slots players need to briefly leave a slot machine, but don't want to give up that slot machine to someone else who might want to play it. If this break is relatively brief, say only 10 to 15 minutes long, players can use the service button to call over a slot attendant to lock the machine. Yes, the slot attendant can temporarily lock up the slot machine at the request of the player. When the player returns to continue on that slot machine, it can be unlocked by the player inserting their player's club card, or after 10 to 15 minutes when the requested temporary lockout automatically expires. This is a little-known function of players' club cards. For the specific length of lockout times at your casino, simply ask any slot attendant. The second interface area is the bonus display, which is optional. If a specific slot machine has a bonus round available, then it will often have a second display area. The optional bonus display area is dependent upon the specific slot machine model. The location of this bonus display varies. Video slots may use the same primary display screen, but may abruptly display the bonus round game theme instead when activated. However, video slots usually have a secondary display screen available for bonus rounds. More often than not, it is located high up on the slot machine to be viewable by other players from a distance. While not a pro tip, advanced slots players should be aware casinos offset their losses by offering slot machines with bonus round displays visible from a distance. Frankly, wins on these highly visible and loud bonus displays are seen by many, and this visible win encourages other casino patrons to play slot machines. Here's the second of three pro tips for this podcast episode. Bonus rounds generally cannot be activated unless that slot machine's maximum credits are bet. By not betting maximum credits, the player is unwittingly lowering their odds of winning. If betting maximum credits on a specific denomination credit slot machine is not done, likely because it's not affordable, pick another slot machine that is affordable. I discussed this approach in detail in Professor Slot's Episode 4, Choosing Candidate Slot Machines. What I mentioned in Episode 4 is, briefly, and without a lot of important details, match your affordable bankroll to the denomination and maximum credits of a slot machine, such that you will have 100 to 120 possible bets for that bankroll. The third out of seven interface areas is the highly important pay table. The pay table area lists information on the jackpot amounts won for specific real combinations. It can also display some or all of the game theme rules for that slot machine. This area may be permanently displayed on the slot machine or possibly only available through an interactive series of images available by touchscreen. In either case, all the possible winning combinations may or may not be displayed on the pay table. Sometimes the list is highly abbreviated due to space limitations, and the pay table will actually display only the uppermost jackpots. On other slot machines, particularly those with large touchscreen displays, a series of images may be switched between to view many or all of the winning real combinations. However, pay tables typically clearly display the highest value jackpot. For slot machine game themes with multipliers or wild real symbols, these special real symbols are usually the highest value jackpot on that machine. On the other hand, sometimes multipliers or wild real symbols may not be fully shown in the tabulated list of winning real combinations. Instead, they may only be found in writing along the edge of the pay table interface area. However, as mentioned, the latest slot machine models with physical reels now also have large touchscreens, which brings with them the capability to provide full pay table information along with detailed game theme rules. Perhaps more slot machines will have this feature in the future. Note also that many pay tables only show the amount of credits won for a specific combination of real symbols, and not the dollar or currency amount won. Showing only credits is a danger to responsible gambling, as doing so blurs reality or offsets the realization that real money is actually being bet, whether it is ultimately being lost or won. In either case, whether currency or credits, these pay tables have separate columns for the winning real combinations dependent upon how many credits are bet. If there are three or less credits possible to bet, the pay table will generally show three columns of real combinations, one for each of those credits. 
If more than three credits are possible to bet, then in general, not all will be shown. How many and which is dependent upon a slot machine specific game theme. However, the winning real combinations for the maximum credit bet is generally always shown. This is typically provided in the far right column. Some highly limited examples of credit and denomination combinations are a one credit slot machine having a $100 denomination, a three credit slot machine having a $5 denomination, a five credit quarter slots having a 25 cent denomination, or a 300 credit penny slot having a one cent denomination. Here's the third and last of three pro tips I'll be providing in this episode. Frankly, learning the pay table of any slot machine played is generally a relatively easy way to improve the odds of winning at slots. Many typical slots players believe there is no skill involved in winning at slot machines. Casinos gently foster this misunderstanding, as it is to their benefit. Don't fall for it. Slots players find it acceptable to play slot machines without visually succinct play tables. And frankly, casinos would rather their customers spend their time playing a game they don't understand rather than studying or reading until they do understand it. To be clear, one easy-to-learn skill not previously mentioned that will improve your odds of winning at slots is to learn the rules of the game theme you're playing. Will doing so always help? Frankly, no. But it will sometimes, and every little bit helps. The fourth out of seven slot machine interface areas is the player's club card interface. The player's club area includes a card reader, numbered keyboard, and a small display. A security feature of player's club cards is for players to choose a PIN number to enter when they wish to connect to their player's account on the casino's computer system. Newer style slot machines have a touchscreen display, which removes the need for a physical keypad meaning the keypad becomes part of the touchscreen display. A player card is usually not required to play a slot machine, nor, if used, does the PIN number need to be entered to play or to even view basic information, such as running totals of reward points earned during the current play session. The PIN number is required, however, to 1. Connect to certain portions of the player's casino account, 2 transfer banked funds from the player's club rewards program, or three, activate free play provided by the casino as a reward or complimentary gift. The fifth out of seven interface areas is the results display. The results interface area is where the real combinations are seen after making a bet. It also includes several small windows or LED displays showing the amounts of any wins, including zero if there are no wins. Whether it is a video slot machine or a slot machine with physical reels, the results of a bet are provided in this area. A player's interpretation of whether or not the particular reel combination result is a winner requires an understanding of the pay table, but this interpretation is performed automatically by the slot machine, as it will immediately display the results of the bet, whether anything was won or not. Typically found beneath the reels are one or more small displays showing the total amount of money or credits available in the machine, how many credits were recently bet, and the amount won, including zero, if that was the result of the bet. Amounts won are usually cyclically provided in credits as well as monetary amount. The sixth out of seven interface areas is the game play console. The play console typically has many physical buttons, a cash or voucher reader, and a voucher printer. The buttons generally include 1. Cash out for requesting the removal of any player funds in the machine. 2. Service to request a casino attendant. 3. Different buttons to select the number of credits to bet, plus a button to place the maximum possible bet. 4. Repeat to make another bet for the same credits as the last bet. And five, denomination, which can be optional, to select a specific bet denomination on that slot machine. The player console may have any of a number of possible button configurations and is highly dependent upon the physical model of the slot machine. Because game themes are often switched to maintain the interest of players over time, it is common casino practice for player consoles to be standardized. This reduces storage space at the casino and eases the switching out of a less-than-popular game theme with a new game theme potentially more popular. 
Also, it is becoming common for consoles to have embedded displays visible through their semi-transparent button covers, where all of these small displays close together are linked to show visually stunning composite images displayed across the entire array of buttons. The seventh and final interface area is the Ticket In, Ticket Out reader and printer system. By around the year 2000, the use of coins were entirely removed from casinos. This was done for the sake of convenience of everyone concerned, including both the casino and customers. Why? Because both had issues with handling so many coins. Customers had difficulties inherent with carrying heavy weights, but also gambling delays due to slot machines becoming either full of coins and therefore couldn't accept any more, or due to being empty of coins and could no longer dispense wins. Casinos had issues with coins as well, not limited to physically dealing with customer complaints due to these delays mentioned, but also because it was a logistics issue. The casino operator had higher costs of maintaining a larger vault space and coin processing equipment and services. Basically, as casinos became more and more popular, coins had become more and more difficult for everyone. As a result, the technology seen originally in automated teller machines, that is to say ATMs, was pulled into casinos as a ticket-in, ticket-out system on each and every slot machine, as well as kiosks for dispensing cash for those vouchers. Once proven out, like so many other slot machine technologies, this slot machine technology is here to stay. In this segment, I discuss the operational components of a slot machine from the point of view of a slots player, including the various interface areas on the front of a slot machine, such as 1. Service light, 2. The optional bonus display, 3. Pay table, 4. Players club, 5. Results area, 6. Play console buttons, and 7. Ticket in, ticket out. I also provided the following three pro tips. Pro tip number one, slot players can briefly leave and still reserve a slot machine by asking a slot attendant to temporarily lock it until the players return and insertion of their player's club reward card. Pro tip number two, bet maximum credits on any slot machine played to get the best possible odds of winning on it. Pro tip number three, learn the pay table of any slot machine played to generally improve the odds of winning. Remember to visit professorslots.com slash free. Again, that's professorslots.com slash free to get my free report revealing the top seven online resources for improving your gambling performance, including the one I've used as a top-tier slot machine casino gambler. Show notes for this episode are now available within most podcast apps or alternatively on my website at professorslots.com slash e10. Let's get started with the second segment of the show, Delaware Slot Machine Casino Gambling. The state of Delaware Slot Machine Casino Gambling consists of three gambling establishments. One, Delaware Park, two, Dover Downs, and three, Harrington Raceway. All three casinos, or racinos, are paramutual facilities. That is to say, they are state-licensed sites for betting on dog and horse races. In addition, each location has slot machines. In total, there are 7,520 slots and gaming machines at these three casinos. These slot machines are operated under the Delaware Lottery. Also, Delaware slot machines are technically identified as cash payout video lottery terminals. In more common slots terminology, Delaware electronic gaming machines at casinos are all video slot machines. By Delaware state law, All video lottery terminals, including those designated as slot machines, must have an annual 87 to 95 percent payout return of all wagers. To have games with a payout percentage return greater than 95 percent, approval is required from the director of the Delaware Lottery. The minimum gambling age is 21 for slots and 18 for dog and horse racing. The minimum bet in Delaware's casinos is one cent. The maximum bet is $2,500. For those interested in more details, the Delaware State Lottery website offers its video lottery and table game regulations on its video lottery webpage. Most notably, the Delaware Lottery has a strong policy of winner privacy. As slot machines fall under the jurisdiction of the Delaware Lottery, casinos will never release the names of winners for promotional purposes unless the winner specifies otherwise. In the state of Delaware, 
it is legal to privately own slot machines, which are 25 years old or older. The state of Delaware has its State Gaming Commission within its Department of Safety and Homeland Security, which is called the Division of Gaming Enforcement. It, one, exercises exclusive jurisdiction for the criminal offenses relating to gaming, two, investigates the background, qualifications, and suitability for each applicant which requires licensing by the Delaware Lottery, three, provides assistance to the Delaware Lottery in the consideration, promulgation, and application of its rules and regulations, and four, has other duties necessary to maintain public confidence and trust in the credibility and integrity of lottery operations, agents, and employees. Video lottery terminals, including slots and other electronic games, were provided by the Delaware Lottery after being approved by the state legislature in 1994. In mid-2009, Delaware legalized sports betting for its three casinos, specifically in the form of parlay or teaser cards based on the final scores of NFL games. In early 2010, the Delaware legislature further approved table games for these casinos. This was done to help Delaware casinos compete with casinos located across state lines within neighboring states of New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and Maryland. All three Delaware casinos are open 24 hours. However, they are closed on Easter and Christmas holidays. The largest gaming casino in Delaware is located in the state capital of Dover. This is the Dover Downs Hotel Casino, with its 3,200 gaming machines and 41 table games. The second largest casino in Delaware is the Harrington Racetrack and Casino, having 1,800 gaming machines and 42 table games. The Dover Downs Hotel Casino has its website at www.doverdowns.com, and is located in Delaware's capital city of Dover. From mid-2016 to mid-2017, its average payout percentage return was 92.56%. This 92.56% is the highest payout return from any of these three casinos. The Delaware Park Racetrack and Slots has its website at www.delawarepark.com and is located in the town of Wilmington. From mid-2016 to mid-2017, its average payout percentage return was 92.30%. The Harrington Raceway and Casino has its website at www.harringtonraceway.com and is located in the Delaware State Fairgrounds in the town of Harrington. From mid-2016 to mid-2017, its average payout percentage return was 91.86%. In summary, Delaware slot machine casino gambling consists of three paramutual racinos, one, Delaware Park, two, Dover Downs, and three, Harrington Raceway. Across these three racinos, a total of 7,520 slots and gaming machines are operated by the Delaware Lottery. In mid-2009, Delaware legalized sports betting for its three casinos, specifically in the form of parlay or teaser cards based on the final scores of NFL games. Further, the Delaware legislature approved table games in 2010. Notably, the Delaware Lottery has a policy of winner privacy, including for slot machine jackpot winners, unless the winner specifies otherwise. I'd now like to take a moment to provide a new feature to the show, which is an audience review by one of my listeners provided on Apple Podcasts. Here it is. Title. Very informative. Um, This is a five-star review in iTunes USA by Margie Pep on October 20th, 2017. Quote, I really learned a lot and can't wait for more. Unquote. Thanks for the review, Margie Pep. Again, if you'd like to provide a rating and review, simply use your podcast app or visit professorslots.com slash Apple Podcasts for Apple users or professorslots.com slash Android for Android users. Part one of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast is Why Do Slot Machines Say Bar? I'll have an introduction. I'll talk about bar real symbols. I'll give a bit more history and then a summary. This next episode will complement my prior episode six on why slot machines use fruit, so we'll include a lot of new material previously not offered in that show. Part two of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast is District of Columbia Slot Machine Casino Gambling. 
This is the United States' one and only federal district, consisting entirely of the city of Washington, D.C. As usual, this segment will have an introduction, relevant legal statutes on gambling, slot machine private ownership, state gaming commission, if any, gambling establishments, if any, and a summary. Going forward, I plan to offer a third segment to the show. Part three of the next episode of the Professor Slots podcast is a casino trip report, when I play slot machines using my winning techniques and report on my results, as well as whatever else happened during that casino visit. Why am I adding this new segment? Well, it has occurred to me that only explaining how to win isn't sufficient to build credibility with an audience of slot enthusiasts. To build credibility, to grow my audience like I need it to grow in order to be successful at my business, I also need to demonstrate as often as I can afford that my winning techniques work. So beginning with the very next episode, I'll be including a detailed casino trip report for a recent visit to a local casino where I'll play slot machines. As already explained at the beginning of this podcast, I originally won 90 taxable jackpots over nine months, then a car, and have made a financial profit at slots since 2013. But to go into more detail, so far this year, I've made only seven trips to casinos, including two trips with a local client to explain how to win at their casinos. Yet, I've still made a 20% annual profit. Here are some specific numbers. The total of all seven of my bankrolls so far this year has been $4,770. My gambling profit, not yet including the fair market value of a few small complimentary gifts, is nearly $1,000. That is to say, I spent $4,770 and I made back $4,770 plus an additional $1,000. Well, specifically, my annual profit for 2017 is currently $957. These seven trips are the fewest number of annual visits I've made to casinos in years. But speaking frankly, this is entirely due to my investing a lot of time, thought, and money on my website, podcasts, and other important aspects of my Professor Slot's business. But now it's time to get back to slot machine casino gambling as proof for my audience. So on the next episode of Professor Slots, I'll report on my next casino visit. I expect my bankroll will be $500, which is an amount I feel I can currently afford to safely lose. Then I'll let you know what happens. Wish me luck. That's the end of another great episode of the Professor Slots podcast. Thanks so much for listening. Show notes for this episode can be found within most podcast apps or alternatively at professorslots.com slash e10. I plan to have the next episode come out very soon for you, where I'll have more amazing content for the show. Please subscribe to and review the show. That would help so much. Here's how to subscribe. If you're an Apple user, simply visit professorslots.com slash Apple Podcasts. If you're an Android user, simply visit professorslots.com slash Android. Until the next episode, have fun, be safe, and make good choices.